Oh, hi there, folks. Ziggy here to give you a disclaimer. We here at Lost Anarchy would like to thank the Sunset Music Festival for letting us be at your fine event and don't want to burn any bridges. But it doesn't mean that we won't tell it like it is. Realize that our fearless leader, Mojo El Diablo, was a dumbass drunk and complete jaded asshole most of the time. With that said, there are some good things we would like to point out. The staff was cool, media people were nice, and out of all the bands on the bill, Orgy, Julian K, and the Dreaming were cool. But that's it. Now here's what Mojo thought. You have been warned. Welcome to another episode of Lost to Anchor Presents. Today we're going to review the Sunset Strip Music Festival. We're at day one of the Sunset Strip Music Festival at the House of Blues. See, show House of Blues over House of Blues. We have some cool cars over here. A red carpet over there. And, you know and I just came here to get my shit show, so I'm debating if I want to go here and watch the jo Joan Jett uh, tribute with a bunch of old fogies who get, actually don't really give a shit about. Or we can go to the Rainbow, get drunk, because I want to drink and I got paid today. Has some empathy and makes a connection that gets to know her fans. She's an animal lover. She's performed Ziggurat. It kicks ass. But yes, uh, this is a pretty star-studded VIP event. And I really don't care. That's how you do it sucks. See, I feel like if you ever played the uh, Deadpool video game, you're just seeing You like tacos. Your cable shows up. And I can't, my cable's all going like, wait, I need you to save the world. Blah, 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 blah. And here's cable. Here's so That's how I feel right now. Like all these people, oh my God, Joan Jett this, Joan Jett that. It's just some person talking behind a screen. I don't care. I <laughs> Up. One of the mistakes, we pretty much, pretty much made ourselves on this stage. Well, this is the worst lineup ever. I mean, come on. The co-headliner was AWOL Nation, oh, a band that's known for what? One fucking song, that's your fucking co-headliner? It's like Lincoln Park and a bunch of people, they pulled out of their ass. I'm sorry, but whoever booked this, it was definitely not the same people who booked all the other years. Come on, man, you could you should have got puddle of mud as your co-headliner. Come on, Wes is always there. Wouldn't be hard to get him. You fucking hate me. You had to book a bunch of stuff you pull out of your fucking ass. That and the, only, the other good thing I can say is I got a media this time for once. Bam, bitch, got a media pass. I can go in and out. Fuck you. So let's get fucked up. See, that's it. Enough said. This is by far the worst summer ever. Come on, dude. I know that you're the snakes always like out with the old, in with the new, but. Pleasure doing business with you, boys. <laughs> the new is a bunch of crap. Funny, big boss. Real funny. <laughs> I bonded with Mario Maglieri. That was awesome. And him. Got a good picture of him. And now for some very brief first glance album reviews. Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds push the sky away. The whole time I was listening to this, I couldn't help feeling like I was being romantically wooed in a dark manner just before my death, that is. <laughs> it stays fairly consistently mellow and is sort of an old Bowie vibe in a way, I suppose. But his voice sounds great. It's easier on the ear than some of his other disjointed stuff. And it's a well-produced and performed album that rocks out a bit and has some edge to it. Nicky and the Stooges, ready to die. Right off the bat, the output is too loud or hot, and thus the mix sounds fried out. And doubling his voice and slicking it out doesn't really help. Sorry. But if they were going for that retro kind of 70s kick out the jams garage type vibe, then I guess they sort of nailed it, especially with the songwriting and lyrics too. But they totally killed it with a slow song midway through before the title track, which is the best song. Bad Religion, True North. In your face, balls out, well-performed and produced, but commercial sing-along type punk 
that's to be expected from these veterans that have pumped out albums like this for decades now. Catchier, more memorable than some of their later albums, though, with less big words, which was smart on their part, because that trip was getting old anyway. <laughs> Too many songs, but by far the best album reviewed here. David Bowie, The Next Day. This comes out the gate as some retro rockin' glammy power pop with a dark twist, sort of, believe it or not. Then it mellows a bit, but with a semi-gritty street sort of feel that also incorporates sax, almost Michael Monroe-ish. The songs rock out a bit here and there, and it maintains some of his various older and newer elements, better than some of his more obscure and also more pop stuff. Depeche Mode, Delta Machine. This is largely four and five minute songs that are too long and too slow to dance to, but that are well performed and well produced for electronic music, I suppose. Some of their trademark keyboard sounds are here, but mostly more mundane ones though. The best song is probably Broken. Way too many songs here though, some of which sounded like forced EBM attempts. New Order, Lost Sirens. This eight song EP is guitar and bass driven power pop with dance beats and appropriately styled keys and slick vocals like it's straight out of an 80s new wave, new romantic or goth club. It leaves you feeling like you think you probably danced to these songs at those clubs if you were around back then. Aside from a few mellow ones that sound like you probably at least heard them back then. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe or I will scratch your eyeballs out.